Hi, I'm Alan Daniels, Chief of Orthopedic Spine Surgery at Brown University. Today, I'm going to talk about adult spinal deformity, what patients need to know. Here's the good news. Spinal deformity is treatable. I want to give you guys some background on the basics of spinal alignment. This is a talk that we'll often give for orthopedic and neurosurgery trainees, but I really do think it's important for patients to understand their condition. As we look at spinal balance, there's a center of gravity where there's a cone of balance. If patients are leaning forward or to the side, their energy consumption rises. What that means is that they'll have fatigue and pain if you don't have a well-aligned spine. Patients with spinal deformity are well aware of this. They feel uh, that they can't walk very far, they'll end up with back pain after prolonged activity. When we talk about coronal alignment, what we're talking about is the frontal balance. If you look at somebody from the front, if they're leaning to the side, that can be very disabling. Similar, similarly, we look at side balance. So there's something called sagittal balance. If you look at someone from the side, if they're leaning forward, that can be a very disabling condition called positive sagittal balance. In terms of cervical alignment of the neck, the cervical spine refers to the neck, we have the same issues where patients try to achieve horizontal gaze to be able to look forward, to look people into the eyes, to be able to look up at the sky. And when they have a spinal deformity, sometimes they have trouble even looking straight forward. So I wanna talk briefly about something called compensatory mechanisms. When patients have spinal deformity, the pelvis has to work harder to help them to stand up. You'll see a compensation of the hips, the knees, and the ankles where they start to bend the hips and knees and ankles to work hard to try to stand forward, to see it forward and have a horizontal gaze. And with that, you'll see that they'll actually also extend their neck up as they work hard to look straight forward so they can walk in a normal manner. Now, I'll briefly mention the pelvis and the sacrum. That's the bottom of your spine. Every person is born with a certain pelvic alignment. It's called pelvic incidence. To achieve a normal upright posture, you need to have a certain amount of something called lordosis, which is a bend in the lumbar spine, to be able to stand up straight. Every patient's different. Some patients need a lot of lordosis. Some patients are born with a pelvis where they don't need as much lordosis, and the spinal deformity surgeon has to match their spinal alignment to the pelvis. So how do we assess patients? We get x-rays. We get CT scans often, MRI to look at the nerve anatomy. We may assess your nutrition, and we'll also have you see a primary care doctor and potentially specialists such as uh, cardiologists or pulmonary doctors if you have lung issues to make sure you're healthy enough for surgery. In terms of treatment of spinal deformity, people will trial medications, which uh, unfortunately often do not have lasting um, excellent benefit because of all the side effects of medications, and most patients don't really want to be on long-term medications for back pain. Furthermore, they don't fix the spinal alignment. Physical therapy is very important to help improve your overall health and do things like prehab prior to surgery, but unfortunately also cannot fix a rigid spinal alignment problem. Bracing has been shown to give some short-term relief, but generally does not provide long-term benefit to spinal deformity patients. Acupuncture, chiropractor, massage may provide short-term relief, but yet again does not fix the problem. So then there's surgery. Always an option, scary for people to consider a spinal fusion, uh, which is the standard of care to realign the spine, uh, but it's something I wanna talk about today. So spinal fusion is the standard of care for complex spinal deformity. Now, first you have to correct the deformity and then perform a fusion to keep the spine in place. Fusion equals a trade-off of a deformed painful spine for a straight painless spine. To allow for correction, sometimes we'll do osteotomies where we remove a wedge of, spine, of the spinal bone from the back and then close the wedge down to realign the spine. And I'll show some cases. Here's a few cases of patients uh, who I've treated in the last few years here in Providence, Rhode Island at University of Orthopedics. This is a 65 year old male who can't stand up. You'll see he's leaning very far forward. He's lost all of his lordosis in the lumbar spine. And after his spinal realignment, which included both an anterior and posterior fusion, he stands up excellent, straight. This gentleman had no complications and uh, this was done in 2017. So now he has multiple years of follow-up, doing very well, never needed any further intervention. 
there are some patients who benefit from short segment fusion. I show this woman, you can see that she's had a previous spinal fusion. She's leaning forward, her whole torso is shifted forward with a relatively short, simple operation. She's now standing much straighter. And uh, this woman actually just recently climbed Mount Washington. So has done very well in this two year follow up. Not everybody needs a long segment fusion, fortunately. I will mention that preoperative planning and complete imaging is absolutely imperative to good outcomes. This is a 74 year old female, no medical problems. She has back pain with walking and fatigue. You see her frontal or AP x ray. She has a scoliosis or a curvature in the lumbar spine. On the side view or lateral x ray, she's leaning forward. She has some fatigue with trying to stand up straight. This is something we do called preoperative templating, where we measure out all these complex angles to see basically the balance of the spine. We've even gone to using artificial intelligence approaches with custom rods to, to really template out how the patient will look after surgery. You see the red bars show a malalignment of the spine. This is her with a full EOS, full body, low dose x-ray, less than a dose of a chest x-ray showing excellent spinal alignment with measurement all in the green showing that we gave her an optimal spinal alignment based on artificial intelligence where we've looked at population-based uh, studies showing what the optimal alignment should be before and after. I'll talk about another case of adult scoliosis here. You see a major curvature in the lumbar spine. Um, you can almost imagine how much this hurts when you look at an AP x-ray and you see that the vertebrae are slipping off of each other. Yet again, we use spine EOS to measure out uh, the x-rays, create, create a 3D model measure all the parameters. We then template the correction, plan the surgery, execute the surgery um, by placing spinal instrumentation all from the back with about a four hour surgery, uh, no complications for this particular woman. Uh, she did very well. I wanna show a quick case of failed spine surgery syndrome. Uh, unfortunately, all over the country and all over the world, people are having spine surgery resulting in um, devastating positive sagittal balance, infections, non-unions, horrible problems that can be fixed. Fortunately, here in Providence, we have a referral center where it's a true destination for people to come for their spinal conditions. Uh, they travel here from all over the world to be fixed in a very nice, convenient place. This uh, poor woman is given permission to use her, her imaging in her face. I just mentioned she's a, a, one of my favorite patients. She's done very well. So terrible spinal balance, cannot stand up straight as you see. That's her trying to stand uh, multiple previous failed spine surgeries. Uh, we measure her out showing that she has terrible spinal pelvic mismatch as we call it. Um, did all her templating uh, CT scan shows uh, failed um, fracture above a previous instrumented fusion with flatback syndrome. This is her only three days post-op, already standing up straight. Um, she's had to undergo a major operation to do it, but got through it without any major complications. Uh, this is her immediate post-op, standing up straight, doing well. Um, really just a, a beautiful result and extremely happy. Um, but I'm always honest with my results that over time, she actually did have some uh, uh, progression of her deformity and elected to undergo an additional comp, uh, surgery to help her to stand up straight. You see that this is after her final operation, really standing beautifully straight and that really has been extremely happy with her result. Quickly mention this other issue of patients who have had cervical spine surgery and can't look forward. There's all these alignment parameters we use in spinal deformity surgery. You see this gentleman's had previous spinal surgery, this was done in 2017, cannot achieve horizontal gaze, has trouble looking forward, and his skull is touching these um, vertebrae. It's a very painful way to live when you're essentially looking up all day long. It's a very fatiguing, painful way to be. So you see that this is him trying to look up. He says at the grocery store, he can't see the top um, shelf of the grocery store. If there's an airplane going overhead, he can't look up. Uh, some patients have difficulty swallowing pills or brushing their teeth as well. So for him, he required a fairly complex surgery, a a uh, posterior anterior posterior surgery, but achieved excellent restoration of his lordosis. So that's the curvature in the cervical spine to allow you to look forward. His alignment parameters are corrected afterwards. His skull is no longer touching the cervical vertebra at C1. And you see just a, a major change for him where he kind of has that fold back in the back of his neck. 
He's able to look people in the eyes and he's been very happy. I'll mention that we do minimally invasive techniques here as well. Uh, this particular woman, uh, yet again, same story where she can't stand up straight, flat back syndrome, previous uh, fusion. Uh, this is her trying to stand up straight, just a kind of a devastating spinal deformity. Her alignment parameters are very mismatched. So she had something called an ACR, which is anterior column realignment. It's done through a minimally invasive lateral approach. Um, we're able to realign the spine in a very effective way through a tiny incision on the side. She did require posterior instrumentation as well, uh, but did very well. You see just a major change in the way she's standing up, really an incredible transformation for her. The last thing I'll leave you with is that even very severe deformity can often be fixed. Um, I want to mention that not everybody, of course, can, can be fixed with a spinal deformity. Some people have too many medical problems or things like osteoporosis or smoking uh, may lead to certain complications after spinal deformity surgery that are devastating. However, even patients with very, very complicated um, deformity, cervical thoracic deformity, this poor individual was leaning all the way forward, could not lift their head up. We were able to provide a major surgery to fix it, um, but she's done very well. And so even the most severe deformities are cared for here at Brown and at University of Orthopedics. If you have any questions at all, you can go to my website, alandanielsmd.com or University Orthopedics um, in Rhode Island. And we've got a comprehensive solutions to your spinal deformity and uh, happy to provide uh, consultation. Thank you.